Dr. Christian Cox, and for this case, we're going to review thoracic 21. And in this patient, they're uh, presenting with cough and shortness of breath, um, middle-aged adult. And on frontal view chest radiograph, the left lung looks relatively clear. So that's a good uh, measure for us to compare against. The right side, though, has an increasing opacity as we get down to the lung base. So it's really a right lower lung predominant, poorly defined opacity. We have some uh, lung markings over the opacity, and I don't see definitive air bronchograms here. I do see a very well-defined uh, linear border, and superior to that border, it's radiolucent, and inferiorly uh, radiodense. Also laterally, I've got a little bit of a meniscal sign out there telling me that I've got some pleural fluid out laterally. I look at the lateral exam, and this has something called the spine sign, or a positive spine sign. The thoracic spine should get more and more radiolucent as we go inferiorly. And here we have this abrupt, again, linear border that as it transitions from what we would generally see as normal thoracic spine to an opacification uh, in the lower uh, spine. So this is telling us that there is some sort of process uh, in the lower thorax, posterior lower thorax. Commonly, that'll be a pneumonia, but really anything that increases the opacity uh, can, can create this finding. And again, that well-defined linear border. So they say, nature abhors straight lines uh, because they generally are poor at uh, handling uh, forces. So a lot of, not a lot of things in our body uh, create straight lines like this. And the straight line is actually an air fluid level. So we know that there's some sort of cavitary uh, process or uh, air and fluid filled process overlying the lumbar spine. Uh, and whether this could be a uh, pulmonary abscess or a cavitary mass uh, or uh, in this case uh, we've got also a border adjacent to it and that makes it kind of feel like this is bulging into the lung and the length of this air fluid level is shorter than the length on the frontal view which tells us also that perhaps this could be a pleural-based process. So cavitary or uh, air and fluid filled space and consolidation. We would still be worried about pneumonia here, but whether or not there's abscess or empyema. So a CT chest is ordered. Generally, you will be giving contrast in that setting. And the reason for that is, as we scroll down into the area of concern, there's something called the split pleura sign, right? So outside of this, there is this thick pleural rind and anterior to it as well. So surrounding this whole thing, there is this enhancing pleura. And that's a characteristic finding of uh, empyema. Also, you don't have any lung architecture that is surrounding any of this uh, uh, space, right? So it's displacing the lung. It's not occupying the lung. Uh, and then it's got this kind of bulge appearance into the, the thorax. So this is normal on the left side to the other side and then look at how it's kind of bulging into it so much so that if I created a full circle here 
that epicenter would be outside of the thorax, and that kind of is one of the ways of saying, oh, uh, this is likely uh, outside the lung and a pleural process. So this is a uh, large loculated empyema and is likely, although the adjacent lung isn't terribly consolidated, uh, was likely associated with a pneumonia that progressed into empyema. You have some air filling defects in the airways, you have some consolidation out there, and in addition to that, atelectasis. So, pneumonia associated empyema. Thank you very much.